If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, December 20th, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. In the Finis Monitor today is Ray Luz, the head coach of the men's and women's teams at Indiana University. The Hoosier men are consistently in the top 10 at the NCAAs, while the women are knocking on the door of a top 10 finish this season. And Coach Luz joins us right now from Bloomington. Ray, good Thanks, to see Jeff. you. How are you doing today? Doing great. Good to be on your show. Good to have you. So um, is are the Hoosiers already in holiday training or are you gearing up for that now? Uh, we're in it right now. We just finished final exams on Friday and we're going to be training here for another uh, week or so and finishing up on Saturday and, and then the kids will be going home to spend holidays with their families for the next week. Are you going to take them anywhere for Christmas training? We're staying put this year uh, in Bloomington, so we'll spend a week training here. They'll go home, and then we'll come back, spend another week before we start our uh, spring semester. What's the what's it like there in Bloomington, especially you know between semesters? Is it pretty quiet there? You know, the kids don't really have much distractions, I would imagine. You know, it's a, it's definitely a college town, but we we all tend to enjoy it a little more when the bulk of the students go go home so it, it's a little quieter but it's it's a cosmopolitan city in the sense that um, there's world-class restaurants of basically any type of food that you could uh, imagine and uh, we have a really good music school so there's a lot of uh, live music and that type of entertainment almost every night here so there's plenty of stuff to do but less traffic right now which is always appreciated well, I'm sure you'll be training them really hard, so they're probably, all the swimmers will probably be too tired to go out and do anything. Pretty much. <laughs> That's what you want to happen, at least. Yeah, you know, when, when you're young, you always have a lot of energy, um, but uh, this is a pretty good group that we've got this year. They're very, uh, very dedicated and, you know, pretty focused people, and, um, you know, I expect they'll, they'll kind of do what they need to do this week to take care of themselves so that they can... Uh, you know, perform in the pool since we don't have any academics to, to worry about right now. Speaking of dedication and focus, these guys, you sent some of these guys to nationals unshaved and untapered. That's a pretty tough group to be able to go up against guys who are at the peak of their, of their season like Arizona and Southern Cal. What was, the, uh, what was the thinking behind having them go there and not be fully rested? You know, we don't typically do a December shave and uh, you know, we wanted to take things up a notch and really challenge our athletes um, mid-season so that, the, you know, they'd get a, a good mental sense of what NCAAs is like. And I was really pleased with how many pros turned up at nationals. Uh, it was a faster meet than we initially anticipated. And so we wanted to, you know, kind of simulate, if you will, what, um, you know, getting into the final at NCAAs is going to take, and uh, we didn't make many A finals, but we we, we uh, kind of broke through on the last day. I think got in there three or four times, and uh, I think uh, we we did a good job of of getting our athletes ready for you know what they're going to face in uh, in March. Well, as a coach, how do you get these these kids motivated to swim fast, knowing that they're going to be going up against people, you know, professionals, Ryan Lochte and Matt Grievers, among others. You know, that's one of the hardest things to do is go into a meet unshaved and, and really unrested because we, we, we pretty much did a full day of training on Tuesday, then got on the plane Wednesday. Um, you know, it's one of the more challenging things I found as a coach to, to uh, kind of overcome. Um, but I think they were excited to, to hit the road. And, um, you know, they kind of work their way into the meet is, is what happened. So, you know, the first day you know B and C finals and then you know ending up by the you know the third day of the meet with quite a few A finalists and almost everybody we brought to the meet scored so um, we ended up splitting our squad you know half of them went to an invitational in Columbus 
and then um, the other half went to, went to Austin and really we were just looking for the ability to get second swims and, and gain experience against top level competition. Uh, Steven Schmuel got some pretty good competition himself. He was at the Short Course World Championships last week, got 12th in the 400 IM. What are your thoughts on how he did? You know, we were pretty happy that he got that opportunity. You know, he, he certainly wasn't the first choice for that team. Um, but, you know, in the post-Olympic time period, you never know when your opportunity to to make a national team may come and that was the first time you know outside of maybe a, a youth Olympic team that he's gotten a chance to represent Team USA and you know I think his, he went a 4-10-3 which is equivalent to you know right around a 344 and for a guy that really can count on one hand how many times he swum a 400 IM it's not a bad um, not a bad time to go at this point in the season and literally you know his rest started as he stepped foot on the plane to head to Turkey. Well, I, so we were real. It would have been nice to see him make the A final, and he was real close, but we were pretty, pretty thrilled with his result nonetheless. Yeah, I think it was this world championship team, especially for the United States, it was an opportunity for those younger swimmers to get that um, experience. And I think, like you said, he's going to come back and, and really, you think he's really going to have that confidence going into NCAAs? You know, that's the thing for Steve is it's all about confidence. Um, you know, he's probably, he did something his freshman year last year that I've never seen happen to a person. He, he did not score a point at the Big Ten Conference Championship individually, yet he scored individually at NCAAs. And, and uh, you know, really the difference was he, he felt more confident in himself. And, and since that 200 fly at NCAAs last year, he's kind of taken off. He had a great summer awesome Olympic trials and then an even better US Open which you know gave the opportunity to, to to head to Turkey to represent Team USA so you know he's really on a roll right now and I think it's gonna pay great dividends you know moving forward into the future. You were a 400 IM or yourself in your competitive days so it must be a good feeling for you to kind of to have a swimmer doing so well in that event now. Yeah you know we it, it, there was probably my first eight, I've been at Indiana 10 years now and my first eight years here we really didn't have an elite level 400 IM or until last year when Sam Tryon broke in and got fourth at NCAAs for our men's team uh, and then Alyssa Vavra did quite well at the women's meet so you know to have Steve kind of step into that role as well it's it's always nice to see because 400 IM it's a blend of you know a lot of things all four strokes you got to have some speed, uh, versatility, and it, it's really a beautiful event, and a lot of a lot of race strategy can occur. So it's always kind of neat to 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 watch a, a person, you know, develop into one of those uh, those uh, people that can you know swim a 400 IM or even a 200 IM. Well, your men's team's looking really good this year. We just talked about Steven, and obviously getting Eric Ress back after his Olympic red shirt probably would you say his his return adds a big boost to your team not just not just point wise but just mentally for sure you know it, it adds a big boost to him as well you know it was a long year for him you know it's the second time he's red shirted for you know whether it be for the Olympics or for an injury so Eric was so excited you know um, you know, when we did our first dual meet of the season, he goes, man, this is my first time swimming in a co collegiate meet, you know, in, in almost two years, you know, so uh, it, it's, it's great to have Eric back. He's a, he's a wonderful leader and an even better person, and it really gives us some good quality at the top of our team, for sure. Tell me what it was like for you as a coach to get him back on on the collegiate side of things, was it easy for you to do, especially knowing that you know he had had that disappointment of not making the French Olympic team? You know, it was not easy. It's it's been hard for him when he didn't make the team last spring. You know, he came back and said all the right things, and you know, tried to get himself you know refocused on new goals. But um, you know, just in the past month, I've I've seen the old the, the old. Eric, you know, the, the happy guy that is really enjoying himself, start to, to blossom again. So it, it's been a process. Uh, you know, whenever you come really close to doing something that special, um, yet fall short, 
you know, it's probably one of the biggest tests of your character and your, your perseverance that you're ever going to, um, you're ever going to deal with. And, you know, I, I just shared with him some of my personal experiences getting third at Olympic trials in 1992 and kind of how, what I went through and what, how I approached it. And, you know, it doesn't make it hap It doesn't make, make you do something any quicker, but, um, it's always nice to know there's other people are dealing with the same emotions that you are. Yeah, it probably does help knowing you have a coach who could kind of has who has had that own own personal experience. Uh, now we like you said we've got a lot of big stars on your men's team. The women's team still kind of working its way up to to be a little bit equal. What are your expectations for the women this season? You know, it's a it's a fair statement about our women. Um, you know, I think I think by the end of the season they may surprise a lot of people. Um, we have a very good freshman class that's uh, really coming into its own, and you know one of the most important things is we have we have great leadership, and uh, you know so if they continue to develop and you know just get exceptional team chemistry, which they're definitely pointed in that direction, they're going to surprise some people, you know, on on what they might be able to do. But I think the rankings of of that team are fair right now. And, uh, you know, the only ranking that really matters is the last one. And uh, I always talk to both teams about, about this. That's the only one that matters is how you perform at NCAA. So uh, our, our goal is to, to surprise a few people by the end of the season. Well, that said, I'm, I'm sure you put a lot of focus on the Big Ten meet as well. I mean, that's a very competitive meet, and you guys have, have won a couple of championships. So I would imagine the focus is still very strong for that. You know, we, we made a conscious decision, you know, within the past year or so to, to, to try to put more focus on the NCAA meet. So in all honesty, you know, we've, we've tried to really, you know, make our team an NCAA focused team. We still want to perform well at Big Tens, you know, and always compete for a Big Ten title. But really, we want to be, be a tough team at NCAAs, and we feel like we're – um, attracting enough talent, you know, certainly on the men's side this year and in the near future on the women's side to make that a reality. So I'd, I'd have to correct you there, Jeff. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> so it, is, it is probably the right focus to have, right? So that's, that's good to hear. Uh, before we yeah. go, I, I wanted to kind of talk about you coaching a combined team because for many years before you got to Indiana, you're only a men's coach and then you coached just the men's team in Indiana for a few years. So what have has there was there any kind of a change for you when you started um, coaching a combined team? It, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Really, really challenging, and I have such great respect for, for all of my uh, colleagues that that have done it successfully year after year after year. Um, you know, and I think anybody that's recently t you know taken over you know, um, programs that have combined would say the same thing. You know, you're just, you're meeting a lot of different needs and the key is to have, a, you know, great staff and a great support system. And, you know, mine starts with my, my wife, Candice. She's a former coach of a very high level and she's always super supportive and keeps me grounded, doesn't let me complain or, uh, you know, feel sorry for myself. And then just, we have a phenomenal staff here you know, and Donnie Brush, Mike Westfall, and Marie Marsman, and, uh, you know, that, you know, just do a f fantastic job so that when, you know, I need to, to, to go do some recruiting or take care of things that help the program and come back and things are humming along um, as if, you know, I was present. Yeah, that's got to be a great help, and it, it's interesting you, you talk about your wife. I mean, they always say success, success begins at home, so it seems to be for working sure. for you. Well, great, Ray. It's good to catch up with you again. It was great seeing you at Nationals, and, and um, as I told you there, it was good to see your guys swimming well against kind of a, a little bit of adversity. So um, it probably looks like it's boating um, well for you guys at the end of the season. Well, Jeff, it's an honor that you noticed, and uh, even more so one to be on your show. Thank you. All right. Happy we'll holiday. You too. We'll see you um, in March. Sounds good. All right, so that's Ray Luz joining us in, to, in the Phoenix Monitor for today's Morning Swim Show. And that's going to wrap it up for us. Be sure to join us on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, and on Twitter to catch up with all the latest news. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.